Whatever Yahweh is supposed to be known. And you are the creator of the universe and all that God is in it. And it has pleased you to gather also children unto you this evening. We gather with great thanks in our hearts for you, for blessing us with life and health and strength and food for food. We thank you for all your protection, all your great preservation, provision. We thank you for the prosperity of life that we have received from you. We thank you for the heart that we enjoy. We thank you that you have not allowed the powers of hell to have mastery over us in any situation and circumstance of life, spiritual and temporal. We are grateful above all that by your spirit, you have continued to teach us your word, not because you have any merit, but because you are God and you have chosen to show us mercy. And so you allow your spirit to continue to lead us, to speak your word to us. So as to prepare us for that future that does on the corner that will begin by the rapture. We rejoice and are glad to receive all of these things and more that we don't even know, but surely they are there present and you bless us with them. May your holy name be praised forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. We come asking for mercy and forgiveness, Lord. In every way we sin against you, be it in thought, word, or deed, by commission or omission, whether we remember them or not, Father, your children, we are crying unto you. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us. Perish all these sins of our lives and your soul forget you. Lord, do not allow them to come before your holy face again, no matter what Satan will try to do. Just let the blood of Jesus Christ be released now, O God, that it will cleanse us and wash us clean, flushing away every spot or wrinkle of sin anywhere it is found in our lives. Let us be thoroughly cleansed so that to this evening as we gather unto you and you behold us, Lord, we pray, may you not cease sin. Rather, we pray as always, see us dressed in the white linen garment of your sins. In Jesus' name we pray. For we with us this evening, let your spirit unto whom we are gathered now, let your spirit take over. Speak through me that all of us, your children, will be blessed by that which we speak. And that that which we speak will have effects in our lives, that our lives will always be tuned towards your word, that the powers of hell will not have any power over us in any shape or form. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers. Blessed be thy holy name. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise God. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, I welcome you to this evening service. As of this moment, none of our brethren has joined us on the platform. 
only those who are here physically. But we thank God for it. We thank God for our sister Fatima. She has joined us now. All of you are able to join punctually. May God remember you for obeying his word and the sacrifice you made by obeying that word. May the same God who has given you life reward you abundantly for it. In all matters and issues of life, we pray spiritual and temporal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Please turn your Bibles to John John chapter 8. John chapter 8. You want to read one verse. Verse 32. John chapter 8. Verse 32. It's a scripture verse that all of us know very, very well. And it says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is God's word. Let the Spirit of God that give us this word. Let's not do the need of his word. But let that word find a place in our hearts and our lives tonight and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise God. This evening, I want to speak on a topic titled Food for Thought from Diverse Sources. Food for Thought from Diverse forces, Sources. I chose not to, to preach in the way that we are used to uh, preaching. But today, to borrow from what some other people have said, and then to link it back to the Word of God. And in doing so, I'm going to take from two posts that I received from a brother in Enugu and a family friend of ours in Lagos. And then I try to write up but also take a passage from the sermon book. The message to the message from Barbara. This post, which I received from a brother who always joins us on our Sunday program from many people, and in fact, some people gather in the Psalms for Sunday sermons, not just himself and family, but some other people coming to join. From what I gather from him, he projects the service onto his television. And so people sit around there and they can 
So he sent me what I want to share with you, which I already sent onto the GTBF platform. I think I sent it two days or two days or so ago. Uh, not quite sure, but I think it's probably two days or so ago. Yes, two days ago I sent it on the platform. It was titled Pastor Fins in Church. But I have no plans to go to the post. It's very, very lengthy. It will take a lot of your time to go through it. So I just want to bring some points from there. It's a story about a pastor. And let me quickly add that at the end of this very long at the end of this very long uh, post that something is put there to give us an idea. I'm just trying to find that now. Just give me a second or so. I'm trying to find the last, the last sentence. The reason I sent it to the platform of GTBF is because I believe it will help. But after sending it to the platform, I did add a statement of my own that uh, some portions, good portions of what the man gave is quite unscriptural. But you know, many people who call themselves pastors are not too sure of what the word of God really is talking about. So many times they say things that they do not know that they do not have any Bible authority to say. But I said, look away from that and just look at the, the, the things that happened, which was what this story was all about. And you can find that it really describes the church today. And that's the reason that I put it on the GTBF platform. You can see I've been scrolling since to find exactly what that statement is. Yes, I found it. This story is a, compil a compilation of actual experience. In other words, what is compiled into this story, which I put on the platform, is about things that were experienced, or they think they experienced. But what I want to really mention that this pastor of this church, so he must be clearly a big pastor, He had organized a praise program. It's an annual event of that church. A praise program 
for 50,000 worshippers. But in actual fact, the attendance was more. And for this, they got even an event planner to come and arrange everything. So that shows you the event planner had nothing to do with the church. So for all you care, the event planner could even have been a Muslim. He was just there to do his job. And then everybody gathered over 50,000. For this program, the church bought new musical equip equipment. After all, it's a praise work, it's a praise and worship program. Everything was bought and it was new. And the equipment, the musical equipment, equipment cost over a million dollars. So we are looking at around 500 million naira for a musical show that will last just one night. The musicians themselves, there were three major musicians coming from America and seven from Kenya, South Africa, and Nigeria. So altogether there have been 10 gospel music artists at the show. In the church itself, they have spent five months practicing for that one night show. Some that happened for one night, they spent five months practicing. A new attire was acquired for the choir, very eye catching. In fact, the pastor described himself as angelic. That shows it must have cost quite some money. Live TV broadcast from a couple of stations were also arranged. And as we expect, for a place like Lagos, that show caused traffic congestion, causing a lot of standstill in the city of Lagos. And of course, the pastor himself was standing on the high podium for obvious reasons so that everybody will see him. He had a special podium made, so he'll be right on top there. It was while he was there, and he was enjoying the program as was going on, by his own account, he felt the call, he felt the call of nature, and he decided to dash for the toilet. And while he was there undressing himself for what he was impelled to do, he fainted. And when he fainted, from the account he gave, he said he felt his spirit, he saw his spirit leaving his body. And standing there and looking down on his body that was lying on the toilet floor as if it was dead. He said, Then an angel appeared and then tried to take him on a certain journey. on the supernatural journey. When you read this thing, you find that some portion of it, as I said, if God has blessed you with fairly good knowledge, fairly good 
third of his word, you find that some of it does not rhyme the scripture, but it's what churches generally say. And it is in this message that you can say, no, 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 you haven't got it right. But in the generality of Christendom, it's perfectly okay. So you see, the experience to God in the spirit as the angel was giving him. The angel showed him as the dancing was going on that there was not a single angel in the midst of the congregation. And so the pastor was surprised uh, asking the angel, little me, how is this possible? We have prepared for months for this uh, prayer and worship program. We have spent a lot of money on it. We have invited the, the top people, everybody you can see how large over 50,000 people are present. And how come this thing that we are doing for God, how come there is no angel of God around? Does the Bible not say that wherever God's children are gathered and they are praising God, that God will to be present in such places. So how come that God is not present here? Who? How come that God is not here? It troubles that pastor. This program they were doing was called Praise Nation. That's the word that they called, they gave it Praise Nation. P R A I Z N A T I O N. One word, Praise Nation. You know? And the angel said to this pastor, yes, you have this your big program. Over 50,000 persons are present at this your praise program. You have all the latest musical equipment, choir, everything, imported the gospel, artist. But you see, God is not there. That is why there's not a single angel in that place. The pastor was surprised. All this effort, this, this whole crowd of people, everybody shouting, praising God. The name of Jesus sounded here and there. And you are saying God is not there. The angel asked the pastor, how did you come about this uh, program? And because he was in the spirit, he could not lie. The idea hit him when this pastor was watching a concert by that American singer and actress, Beyonce. I'm sure you know that Beyonce has no business with God. So at least as of now. So it was watching the concert. And you know, when people like Beyonce are making concerts, it's a huge thing, a huge crowd. 
the last one, lockdown for hours. So the pastor who should spend time reading the Bible, had time watching the ox. Then he got the idea of that kind of thing. So he now wanted to do it. And then he called it Praise Nation. And gathered everybody to come there. Over 50,000. Costing over a million dollars. Over 500 million naira was spent on the thing. And yet, it has nothing to do with God. But all they were shouting there was the name of God by his Christ. Not a single presence of God there. And so if it wasn't something that required God's presence, Whose other presence will be there? The devil. So this church has spent hundreds of millions of naira. Crowd, well over 50,000. Put the whole of Lagos into a traffic jam and all for the sake of devil. And they call it church. What devil was doing? They said it was God doing it. Do you see, George? All the anointing that was at that program came from the pits of hell. And just see many people that were gathered in that place. You yourself, you know that such programs are commonplace in Nigeria, especially when you get to come to the time of the festivals, Christmas, New Year, Easter, and things like that. You find these gigantic churches, especially Pentecostal churches, they begin to come up with these programs. Before that day, adverts would be flooding television stations, radio stations, newspapers, informing people about this program, asking them to attend, tell you miracles will happen, come and hear God's ordained singers from America, from Europe, from South Africa, from this place and from that place, you will find all of them there. And then in one small corner in the other, you will put Jesus is Lord. But in the photograph of the pastor that you see on the adverts, then in a tiny corner to put Jesus. And that shows, that shows you exactly what it is. All you have in such places just anointing from the devil. In one swoop, devil just collected over 50,000 disciples, baptized them with his spirit. And they go to their respective homes, to their respective families, carrying that satanic anointing and then go and anoint their own families. So the number at the end that will receive the anointing of Satan just from that one program alone may well be into hundreds of thousands of souls. God was not glorified in such places. He is not being glorified. So that's how it is with many programs that you are seeing today.
The angel, according to this pastor telling the story, said the angel asked him, that there was a light that showed, showed up and asked him how he came by this whole program. How it was designed, how it was created, how it was named, and finally ex executed. The pastor said, all of that came from him. So God had absolutely nothing to do with it. And that is how it is with a lot of the so-called gospel music that people are buying today. And they're playing. They say, oh, you know, I tell you, a lot of what called gospel music that you spend money buying, you play them in your rooms, your bedrooms, in your kitchens, even when you are having your bath, in your cars, and all of that. A lot of them have absolutely nothing to do with God. The anointing behind them is tough. Satan. I know this will hurt people, but that remains the truth. What they are doing is to make money. Using God's name for merchandise. Just as it's done in churches. You use God's name and you make money. Any service that you are doing that, telling them to come and sow this, some and store that, and you know that it's just for you to collect money, how will God be in such a place? It's not possible. God can never be there. Our God cannot be mocked. And so stop deceiving yourself. You may well deceive the human beings, but you don't deceive God. Nobody can deceive God. For those who worship God, the Bible says to you and me, they must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you have to do any program for God, for God, God has to be the one behind it. The Spirit of God breaking down into the program right from its inception. From the moment we thought of it, God must be in it. First of all, telling you, yes, go, along, go ahead with it, or no, I don't want it now. And if says, just go ahead with it, how it's going to be, all of that, God has to be there for him and when it now takes place for he, this same God, to be present there by spirit. And if God has to be there, then his angels obviously will be there. And so if God opens your eye, your inner eye to see what's going on there, you will see his presence by all the angels that are also in the place. But you know, it is not like that today. When people gather in such places, they are only interested in the music. Music that is not uttered, that is not authored, it's not the Spirit of God that utters it. Just check our choruses that we sing today. Take the choruses that we sing, then take a hymn book. Check the hymns in the hymn book. Check these choruses that we are singing today. Something that is largely the creation of the Pentecostals. Pentecostalism is the problem. Check it and check what's in the hymn books. You will see the difference. When you see what's in the, the hymns in the hymn books, when you don't even sing them and you just read 
the stanzas. They make meaning to you. They preach to you. But you see what we see these days? Nothing. It's just on the flesh. And what does it do? It makes us to dance. That's all. You see? That is why many churches today have turned into disco halls. And when you see people dancing in churches today, if it's possible, uh, it's not photograph. Video, video them, then go to Fela Shrine. But in that club, you know, video them as well. Then come back and play two together. They're exactly the same. Disco halls have come into church. And I say to you, yes, the Lord is here. Shake it off. And before you know it, people have fallen under anointing. In that kind of situation, I found that anointing. Is that anointing of God? Satan is just laying you there. And in any case, look at what the especially our sisters, look at what they are going to wear. Or what they wear inside there. What do you see? Bare bodies. How can God be found in such places? You can't mess with God. Tongues are coming from mouths that are not even cleansed by the fire of God. How can the mouth be cleansed when the hearts are not cleansed? It is really bad. In some of these churches, to do some of these programs, they go to higher musicians. I mean, those who play instruments, the drummers, the pianists, the organists. They go to hire them. They play the conga. They play the bongos. They hire them. Many of them have absolutely nothing with God. They bring them there just to play the music. And you are dancing to beats by hands that are totally desecrated. And you are going home after maybe five, six hours of the program. You can say, I'm mightily much, much blessed today. Yes, you are blessed, but you are blessed by a sick man. You are not blessed by God. We have to be very, very careful. You know? So this person was also saying that this angel was showing him that when he was buying those new equipment costing over a million dollars, donations because he put out uh, Correspondence and adverts asking for donations, and um, people donated. And a good deal of donation came from frosters, money made from fraud, money made by people who had gone killing people, murdering people, ritualists. And they use that money to buy instruments, to come, to come and use instruments in the church, and you expect God to bless you. Blood what? You see, it doesn't matter as long as the money has come in. Take it. You don't bother to ask God. You don't have to check God. Where did this money come from? 
that we have used to buy all these instruments we are going to use for this our special program? No. What's important, the churches want their names to be heard. Because every time they are campaign to bring more and more people in, that is what the matter is. It's not bringing them in for salvation, it's to have numbers. They've turned the Christian race to a numbers game. And why? Because of the money they think they can realize from it. And that is why there are so many programs to collect money in churches today. All that Christ, all that's in the church is tithe and offering. The tithe is for the ministers, the offering is for the church. Nobody calls himself a minister, whether you call yourself general overseer or pastor founder or pope, but whatever title you are giving yourself, you have absolutely no right to dip your filthy hands into the offerings of the church. God has made the way for you. You are his true servant. He has made the way for you to receive something for your table when God asks his children in the assembly to pay their tithes. The tithe is to God, but you receive it on his behalf. God says that's enough for you. But no, they dip their hands into offerings. And that's why they live lavish lifestyles. In mansions that even make film stars jealous. Vehicles. The richest people on earth don't even bother to buy. You find the so-called ministers of God moving all over the place in them. There's one case of a minister whom I saw the photographs. Very long car. And they have carpet. So when he stops anywhere to come out, the staff inside the car, they run out to the carpet and throw it on the ground. And the man, quote and unquote, man of God, he will not match on carpet. Where Jesus is he serving? Did he say anything like that in the life of Jesus Christ? Who is the owner of the church? You see? But when you go to that church, you see signs and wonders. And then people who crowd the place. You say, ah, I thought signs and wonders, everything. I tell you quite clearly, you can get angry as much as you like. Your signs and wonders are being given by Satan. Because all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit of 1 Corinthians 12, Satan gives all of them as well. So it's no big deal. Yes, we need signs and wonders from God, but we want nothing from Satan. So they keep making appeals for money to do all of these their programs by the plug the streets. They post one poster a few years ago that had a convention in which there were more than one million people. I just laughed. So what what did get from that? Was God's approval sought? Before you said that you are paying for funds, did they give you an answer that you should go ahead and do that? What we are doing in churches today, they say they have a program for 30 days of fasting, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days, 
70 days, 100 days of fasting. And in some of them, it's a yearly thing. When did God speak to your general overseer or your archbishop or your whatever you call him, your pastor founder, by whatever name you call him? When did God speak to him and say, tell them to have fast of 30 days, of 40 days, 50 days, 70 days, 100 days? One man sits down and just says, Yes, this program for my church. And they will say to you, okay, so many of those days we will dry fast. Then the rest of this we do six to six. Did God ask you so to do? Where's your example in the New Testament church? For all these 30 days, 40 days, 50 days, 60 days, 70 days, 50. Oh, Jesus Christ fasted for 40 days. That's what they are going to hear. Listen, George, am I saying you should not fast? Absolutely not. Fast. If you're a Christian, you need to fast. You need that life of discipline. But it's not the one who don't come and say, we we'll just look up one day and say, well, our church said we should, we should fast for 100 days, we fast for 70 days. All of a sudden, you say you are fasting. You know you are deceiving yourself. Fast is something, a fast is something that the spirit will talk to you. You will feel inside of you that you are not in charge here, that something is saying to you, for so and so reason, I want to separate yourself and tell this body it has to be silent. You take power by it. But you don't feel anything. A woman says, fast. How does that work? When did God tell them, do that? You know, these people just wake up and they arrogate to themselves the power of God by his Christ through the Spirit. All of this is religion. Christianity is not a religion. But all that these churches are pushing out everywhere is religion. Man's idea of how God should be worshipped not God's own way as he has stated it in his Bible. No, they don't have that for that. This religion that started right in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, knowing that they have done wrong, they decided on their own how they will show that, yes, we are sorry, but we are correcting what we've done wrong. They took leaves and their private parts. Religion, man's way, they decided that for themselves. And when God came into the garden, God turned the leaves away. And he pulled the coats of animals. So blood was shed. It's still the same today. People gather, call themselves I'm so and so church. I'm so and so church. I'm so and so church. Have you ever bothered to ask yourself what goes on in Baptist church? Is that how it is in Methodist church? The answer is no. Is that how it is in Presbyterian church? The answer is no. Is that how it is in Anglican church? The answer is no. Is it how like, uh, uh, Catholic church? The answer is no. Is it how it is in Aladura? The answer is no. What's the other one of Aladura, the sister? Uh, yeah. Is it how it is done in Sele? The answer is no. Then you go to Origin. Is it how it's done there? No. You go to a deeper life. Deeper life will show you something different between them and Origin. You go to Trev, it will show you what's different between them and deeper life and Origin. Then you go to uh, mountain of fire, be saved. Does it occur to you 
that all these churches are different, different, different. So where is Christ there? Can Christ be responsible for such Babel? Babel simply means confusion. And that's what denomination is all about. That is why, whether anybody wants to be angry or not, it doesn't bother me. Denominationalism is not of God. It is just religion. You can take a good number of the things they are saying in denomination, bring it back to the Bible, and it doesn't fit into the Bible. So where they get it from? Man's idea. And that's why you are getting all of this thing from all of these programs, 50,000, 100,000, one people gather. And you ask them, did you ever ask God? And they said, go ahead and do it. And the answer, of course, is, uh, I, think, I thought God, it's good for God now. It's God's thing, so God must approve it. God must approve it. Why did you ask him? And that's how it is with many of us today. We never ask God to approve the things we want to do. We wake up in the morning, we just thank God for having the life, and then we're on our way to work. You enter your car, which you park all, to, all the night, because you don't sleep in your car. You come in the morning, you're on your way to work, you just enter, cram, start the car. Did you ever bother to ask God before you enter that car in the morning? That God, here I am, this is the car you gave me. I was not here last night. I know you were here. So, Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, if it's thy will that you enter this car, take me in. And if it's not, Speak to me directly where to go. Was that was sleeping while you were old, when you are asleep at night? Do you not say to God in Job, ah, oh, you know, I'm never resting, I'm always moving up and down. You want to have your bath, you just jump into your bath, into your, into your bath. You don't care. Are you not very good at enter into their bath and die inside the bath? You are getting ready to go to work to suit up. You just open your world and pick something there to wear. Did you ever bother to ask God? You think God is not interested in that? No, people they don't know what has, what has God, God, God to do with that. I'm sorry for you. God is interested in everything we do. God wants to control everything. You want to eat, you want to drink. You want to go somewhere, have you stopped to say, God, well, I'm supposed to go to so and so place, but are you in it? Should I go? Or should I not go? Since when did we ever remember to be asking God before we make any move? So you find in churches today, it is the Jehovah's idea, it is the pastor's idea, it is the Pope's idea, the judges of idea, Allah Bas idea, all the statues they give themselves. God has been put out of his church. Man now owns the church. It's sad. And that's why now you're a big man, a big church, everything. They come, they give gifts. Furniture, things like that, you begin to decorate your office and homes. Did you ask God to tell you about things you have received? That's why if God will open your eyes and you see some of the things that you have in your room, in your office, you will just fix there. When you see what is sitting on the chairs that you have been sitting, you will just fix. They need to say, hey, and I've had this furniture for five years. 
So for five years, you and the pastor of hell, you have been having wonderful fellowship in your house, in your office, through all these things and through them. All because you never bothered to ask God. That's why I got through this evening's thing. I said, it's food for thought from diverse sources. Moving away a little bit from what we are saying in the message. And then you begin to call yourself all sorts of titles. It's not enough again for you to answer the fivefold titles of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Now it has to be reverend, doctor, this, the eminence, and all of this stuff. Oh, general overseer. There's nothing like general overseer in the Bible. There is overseer, which is the same thing as bishop, which means also elder. That's all. All these other ones we are adding, they are not there. And on top of that, you don't even stop at that. They begin to answer so, some other descriptions. That is why you now find, and I see them on the uh, phones when they are featuring some of these our high class general and whether it's Pentecostalism, you find one man sitting in the chair that can contain five persons. And it's addressing these ministers, and they are squeezing a chair that takes two persons, three of them are squeezing into it, and there is one man, because the other chair is sitting in the chair that can take three or four or five persons. Pride. Where did you see that in the life of Christ? So I'm going to rush now and conclude. But before I do, and then I want to go to the second thing that happened to me, because I said from diverse sources. I don't know this name. I only came across it today for the first time in my life. But I'm going to talk about it. I just ask you that you please be patient. It was sent to me by a family friend of ours who was a Catholic seminarian. Now he entered to be priest and finally he came out. But he's a staunch Catholic apologist today. That was everything of Catholic Church caring for him. And anytime he sees something in the newspapers or wherever, that seems to portray the church in bad light. He will send it to me. When it does not concern Catholic Church, send it to me. Because he's trying to say to me, you see, they are not like Catholics. So what he sent to me, I got it only today, and I'll be busy today. I've not replied to him. But he will get my reply this evening. By the time he gets it, he will not be happy. This is what he sent to me. And that's the first time I'm hearing the name. Somebody called Mommy Gio. I've never heard that before. But they say her name is Evang Evangelist Fumilayo Adebayo, AKA Mommy Gio. So maybe the woman is popular, I don't know. But her church is called. She is the general overseer and founder of a church called Rapture Proclaimer Evangelical Church of God. Rapture Proclaimer Evangelical Church of God. In short form, RAPEC. So this man sent this in to me. And I'm going to read it to you as I have it here. That's why I said, please be patient. 10, 15 minutes, you should be over. I'm reading it word for word. 
you will have to make major lifestyle changes if you consider attending the services of RAPEC headquarters in Yanopaja or any of the other branches. First of all, the woman for calling herself General Garcia, she is already in breach of God's word. She has no business being a minister. As far as the Bible is concerned, she has already missed it. And then coming to her branches as well, she has missed it some more. There is no branch in the Bible of God. It is all denominational idea. But I leave that away. But what are the things that this woman is standing for? Even though it's wrong for her to make herself a minister, but look at what she's standing for in this church. Eyelashes and mini skirts. Eyelashes and mini skirts are forbidden by the church, this woman's church, this rapid. A large banner is hung at the entrance of the church. And that banner says, do not enter the house of God with the following. Do not enter the house of God with the following. I read the following. Beads. All of you know what a bead is. This is our women and men here. Whether male or female, royalty or fashionista, beads are not allowed in the church of Monegio. You are not allowed to dress up like royalty in the church as well. Jewelry. You will have to return that drop dead neck, head, or leg jewelry before you leave home. You can't wear it to her church. The ushers are vigilant. They will find you and seize it for the duration of the service, they will move from you. While the service is going, they will let you wear it. Mini skirts and short skirts. Your quest to look dashing will be dampened by the fact that the church does not allow you to drape yourself in delightful trims and tights. All these body hugging dresses. They don't accept it. Your entire leg must be covered at Rapid Church, that is Mommy Geo's church. Jeans. The church does not condone any kind of jeans, whether slashed, tight fitting, or free. A meme posted online says, Jeans will lead you to hellfire. They posted that on their online. Curly hair, curly hair. Dreads and hair extensions. Curly hair, dreads and hair extension. Hair extension meaning attachment. All these uh, Brazilian attachments. If your hair plays a major part of your identity. You may consider attending other churches, not Monegio's church. Monegio's church does not welcome curly hair, dreads, or hair extensions, attachments for women in her church. Your hair will have to be totally covered up for you to venture into the house of God at Rapid, that is Mommy Geo's church. <coughs> Eyelashes. You must bring your natural face. You must bring your natural face, your natural eyelashes to Rapid, that's from Jesus. You must be prim and proper, like in the days of your past days. 
how they used to dress up. Makeup, all dabs, brushes, and powders will buy you from Mommy Geo's church. Else you won't be allowed in by the ushers. Painted nails. For Mommy, for Mommy Geo, painted nails are a reflection of immorality. A church pamphlet described that described painted nails as devilish. It also likened painted nails to Jezebel in the Bible. Tattoos. You are disqualified from going to the house of God at Mommy Geo's church with your tattoos. If they are not revealing, you will begin to cringe when the salmon hits you where the tattoo lies. So you see, this is not Bram's message that people are saying to us, ah, oh, too much. This is a woman saying this. Last month or so, we had that uh, richest woman in Africa, black woman in Africa, black woman, richest black woman in the world. This uh, for I'm sure, lucky girl, the billionaire woman who was famous for her expensive jewelry. And she came on the, on the Facebook or wherever, or online, and called attention that she has removed all, that Jesus appeared to her and said, all this nonsense you have on your body, take them all out. And that before then she was sleeping, when she woke up, she found blood coming out from the holes in her ears. And then she now had this vision. The angel said to her, get rid of all of these uh, jewels. And this billionaire woman, who used to be a designer for the topmost men in Nigeria, including head of state's wife, this uh, woman now has thrown away all of these expensive jewels. And then she appeared in front of and said, I don't touch them. Jesus told me they are wrong. So for you, I say, it doesn't matter. I'm sorry for you. When that day comes, let me go to your language. You know that they say it does you matter. You know that it does you, which means death matters. When you come face to face with judgment angel, and it shows you where that fire is burning, and it's asking you to go there. So all of these things, they are not come from the message. And now I want to end by bringing you back to our message. So that, and for doing that, I want us to go to the book of Psalms, chapter eight, verses three to five. And look, I have just five minutes and we are close. Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 to 5. Psalms chapter 8, verses 3 to 5. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast made up which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Five, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with honor, with glory and honor. This is the word of God. So this is what Abraham said. God, I'm quoting Brian now, word for word. God always likes to walk through men. It's God's program to walk through man. Do you believe that? God walks through men. He made man his helper on earth. He made man a lesser God 
done himself. And when God made man in his own image, he put him on the earth as a lesser God. Jesus declared it when he said, is it not written in your laws that you are God's? Meaning man. <coughs> and if they call these gods, who the word of God come to, meaning prophets, how can you condemn me when I say I am the son of God? But they just couldn't understand it. But man was put here with a dominion over the earth. He had everything under his control. What Adam lost, Jesus proved that he had restored. He stopped nature. He told him, the air, the wind, the quiet. He raised the dead. He did everything. And as the Bible says, the world is groaning today for the manifestations of the sons of God. For God to get into his children again, in reality, to make things real. But he stumbles the people. If Satan can't keep God's truth from man, then he makes fanatics out of them and throws them off on this side and that side. And then they get all kinds of stuff, of blood, of oil, and sensations, which is not even scriptural. But I said to you, stay on the blueprint. That's the Bible. Stay on the blueprint. Stay on the highway. Stay with the scripture. Don't you ever leave it. That's why Jesus came. That man would not be deceived and go off the side, but stay right in the word. The great St. Paul said, if an angel from heaven comes and preach any other message, other than this that we have preached to you, let that angel be accursed. Yes, sir. Why? Satan came down in the Garden of Eden as an angel of light and told Eve, oh, well, that's all right what God said. Oh, sure, God has said that. But you know, you have more light. That's the light he told so to so Eve, you have more light. Satan speaking through the serpent. So today, we've got so many Eve lights today. We've got so many Satan lights. And the Bible said in the last day that the devil will make himself angel of light. Therefore, all these creeds you have in all of these denominations, and all the nonsense that goes with them, and half of them don't even have any scripture to them. Flee from them, get away from them. Stay on the highway, stay on the road map, which is the Bible. Go the way that the disciples of Christ went. Go the way the word they preach, like it like that word, testify that word. Say, I know it to be the truth and follow it. The signs of the last days are here with you and me. God is living in God. God's program is on. Just as sure as God kept his word to Peter, James, and John, just as sure as he kept it to John, the beloved, the revelator, just as sure as he kept his promise through the church ages, and this is the last church age, is that sure that his promise in these last days, he would send down 
a lettering. I will bring back the same spirit that was upon the earth. Mm -hmm. The land shall come in the evening time and show the same power, the same signs. And this thing that he did in his day, he will show it again, the open door in this last day. Here it is. We got it right with us now, the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's preaching to you, he's preaching to me. It is teaching you. It's trying to get you to see what is right and what is wrong. It is the Holy Spirit himself speaking through human, human, through human lips now, approaching among human beings, trying to show mercy and grace. Go for it and let God Almighty keep you. If the root be holy, then so will the branches be. This is where we end. I have spent the whole of today bringing things from what other people said that they are not in the message. People who got it all wrong, but in getting it all wrong, they still brought out important points for you and me to hold on to, to show us that we are not getting it right. Yet they themselves are wrong, like this man, man G.O. Everything she said, how we should be, is correct by the Bible. Unfortunately, she herself is wrong. She, being a woman, coming to call herself a general Garcia and owning the church and owning branches, which again is contrary to the word of God. But the things that she says must be observed in the church, they are right. That's why I said, food for thought from other sources. And that pastor who organized that praise and worship for well over 50,000 in Lagos that cost over a million dollars. And yet, God was not in it. When God opened his eyes, the inner eye, he saw that for the huge crowd, the imported gospel artists from America, from South Africa, from Kenya, and from Nigeria, 10 of them, he saw that in all of that whole gathering, not a single presence of God was there, not a single thing there. And God said, did you ask me before you did this? Did I approve of it? Did I say, go ahead? So everything there is from you, therefore I don't have any business with you. So all that tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of people gathered and they received anointing from Satan, and then they carry the anointing back to their families. And so what is going to happen in their lives, you begin to wonder. It is not any anti old auntie in the village or old uncle somewhere trying to do juju to them. No, they are just all under the anointing of Satan. And that's why it's happening. Do not be bothered by crowd. Crowd does not lead anybody to heaven. Christ settled the matter already. He said, wide is the gate and broad is the way, and many enter into it. Then he said, straight is the gate, S-T-R-A-I-T. He didn't say S-T-R-A-I-G-A-T. Straight like a ruler. It's not the same thing as S-T-R-A-I-T that you have said. S-T-R-A-I-T, go and check your dictionary. He's talking about difficult, super hazardous. So straight is the way. And narrow, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads to life, eternal life. And only few find it. And when the few find it, they say few enter. So find it. And only few find it. And among those few who find it, some will go away again. So only few are of the few will finally enter. Heaven is not cheap. Run away from this field good theology, field good religion that they are feeding you with. Do that which the Bible says, not what your church says to you. You have no church. There's only one church, it's the church of Jesus Christ. And 
all that Jesus Christ wants you to be in that church, he has put it in the Bible. So when they asked him, teach us how to pray, he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, that is that church. And thy will be done on earth as well in heaven. That will is, however, heaven is one, it was run so on earth. That's the constitution, and that is the Bible. So stop allowing your church to be single, thinking that you can just choose what you like, and then God will accept you. God will not accept you. God will accept you. God will accept me only if we come to him via the way he says we should come to him. Not via the way our denominations are telling us they are wrong, but God is right. We will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together to hear your word. And we pray, Lord God Almighty, all that you have given to us today by your spirit, we have heard them. Help us, O oh God, to stand firm for you. Give us the spirit to live your word. Do not allow us to ever move away from your word. Put the enemy to shame in our lives. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. Thank God, Lord, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Bless your children who have found time to come to hear your word. May you reward them abundantly this day in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you because it is done. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Arise, O Lord God, and come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion, and we plead, Lord, we all committed to your hand, that this be the time to favor us in all of them. For ye the set time is come. You do have set it so. Let it be a portion, O God, in Jesus' name we pray. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord is shine upon you and precious unto you. The Lord is sentence upon you. The Lord bless you, his children, his brother, peace. The grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us tonight and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the mighty living master Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. We thank God for this service and I 